The cells in your body rely on two different molecules to store information and turn that information into functional proteins, DNA and RNA. These two nucleic acids take very different forms, with DNA as a double helix and RNA as a single strand. However, these different structures are not just a quirk of nature. These structural differences lead to very real functional differences, differences that you need to know for the AP test. So stick with us as we go through the structure and functions of the two nucleic acids your body needs, DNA and RNA. Here is a quick outline of the topics we will cover in this video. First, we will take a look at DNA structure and the nucleotides that create it. Then, we will look at the structure of RNA and see how it differs. After the quiz, we will look at the several different types of RNA and the different roles they serve in the cell. Finally, we will compare the structures and functions of DNA and RNA. This video is meant to be a quick overview to help you better understand the topics and prepare for the AP test. If you only need to review one portion of this video, feel free to skip forward to the times outlined here. Let's get started. The big picture in this section of the AP Biology curriculum is that heritable information provides for continuity of life. The heritable information is DNA. Heritable means that it can be passed from one generation to the next. To do this, the DNA strand is duplicated and a mostly identical copy is created. These two identical copies are then distributed to two new daughter cells. The continuity of life describes this ongoing process of organisms growing, replicating their DNA, and creating a new generation of organisms that share that DNA. This section focuses specifically on DNA and RNA and the roles they take to make life possible. The structure of DNA was first worked out in 1953 by researchers Watson and Crick. The team used X-ray crystallography images produced by Rosalind Franklin. By bouncing X-rays off of a concentrated DNA molecule, a clear pattern of dots can be seen. Watson and Crick used these images to determine the chemical structure of DNA. Unfortunately, Franklin got cancer from all the x-ray exposure and died before she was awarded the Nobel Prize like the rest of the team. DNA actually stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, a name that references the ribose sugar and the nucleotide bases that are at the heart of every DNA molecule. Deoxy references the fact that unlike normal ribose, deoxyribose has lost an oxygen atom. At the molecular level, DNA gets its structure through two main features, the sugar phosphate backbone and the hydrogen bonds formed between complementary nucleotide bases. Each nucleotide in the sequence is bonded to the next through a phosphodiester bond, which is created through a dehydration reaction facilitated by the enzyme DNA polymerase. In this bond, the hydroxyl group on the pentose sugar molecule connects to the phosphate group on the new nucleotide. Within the structure of a DNA molecule, the nitrogenous bases stick out perpendicularly from the sugar phosphate backbone. The sugar phosphate backbone creates a helix structure due to the angle of the bonds between each nucleotide. With the addition of nitrogenous bases that form hydrogen bonds with the anti-parallel strand, this molecule takes on a double helix structure also called a duplex. Each nitrogenous base has a specific chemical formula that allows it to form hydrogen bonds with only one other nitrogenous base. Adenine forms bonds with thymine, while guanine bonds with cytosine. Adenine and guanine are purines that have a double ring structure, whereas thymine and cytosine are pyrimidines with a single ring structure. Each complementary base pair has the perfect positive and negative dipoles to form these hydrogen bonds. This is what holds the two strands together and ensures that the right nucleotides are added to a new sequence. Think about this. DNA creates protein, and proteins create a function within cells. Therefore, if we change the DNA within a cell, we can change how that cell functions. We can prove this theory with a simple experiment. Jellyfish produce a protein that emits a green fluorescence under UV lights. Scientists found the gene that codes for this protein and transfer the gene into the nucleus of a mouse zygote. As this zygote developed, the gene was also duplicated and it spread throughout the body of the adult mouse. 
when these adult mice were exposed to UV light, they glowed green, just like the jellyfish. RNA molecules are slightly different from DNA molecules. RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. Unlike DNA, the sugar molecule used in RNA is ribose, complete with that extra oxygen atom that deoxyribose is missing. While this is just one tiny atomic change in the structure of a much larger molecule, the oxygen atom actually causes many changes in the function of RNA. The oxygen atom bonded with a hydrogen creates a large hydroxyl group that sits just above the nitrogenous base from the nucleotide below. This hydroxyl group hinders the ability of the nitrogenous bases to form hydrogen bonds with each other, meaning RNA can usually only be single-stranded. This oxygen atom is also much more reactive than lone hydrogen atom and often engages in hydrolysis reactions that disrupt the structure of RNA. This means RNA has a shorter lifespan than DNA. The other difference that makes RNA different from DNA is that it uses uracil instead of thymine. While all of the other nitrogenous bases are the same, RNA may use uracil for a few different reasons. Uracil is easier to create and can help the cell distinguish between DNA and RNA. You can now pause the video and answer these questions. There is another quiz at the end of the video, and all of the answers can be found through the quick test prep link in this video's description. While DNA is pretty much only found as a duplex in nature, RNA can take on many different forms in the cell. In addition to the single-stranded, single-helix structure most commonly seen as messenger RNA, other important secondary structures include transfer RNA and ribosomal RNA. Transfer RNA, or tRNA for short, is used to add new amino acids to a growing peptide chain. tRNA is created when a single-stranded RNA molecule folds back on itself to create small structures known as hairpins. On one side of a tRNA molecule, three nucleotides are left exposed. These nucleotides can hydrogen bond with a codon on an mRNA molecule, allowing a ribosome to know it has selected the right amino acid. The other end of the tRNA molecule carries a specific amino acid and can only bind to one type of amino acid. When the anticodon loop matches a codon, the amino acid is added to the growing peptide chain. While ribosomes themselves are mostly made of protein, they have an RNA component that intertwines with the protein structure, known as rRNA, seen here in orange. This rRNA adds in the process of translation by holding mRNA and tRNA in place as the translation process unfolds. It also helps catalyze the dehydration reaction needed to form new peptide bonds between amino acids. In addition to these forms of RNA, scientists are constantly discovering new uses for RNA within cells. For instance, there is also microRNA that has functions in regulating genes within the nucleus, RNAs that function as enzymes for certain reactions, and many other special function RNAs that are still being discovered. While jellyfish have taught us a lot about DNA and biology in general, they also have another message. Slow and steady wins the race. Take some breaths while you watch these jellyfish swim around. This will reoxygenate your brain and get you ready for our final topic. Besides a few viruses that use RNA as their main information molecule, organisms on Earth overwhelmingly use DNA to store information and RNA to translate that information into proteins. Let's look at the structure of each molecule to see why they serve these roles so well. The duplex structure of DNA is very stable. Not only are the two strands held together by hydrogen bonds between complementary bases, but the sugar used is also much less likely to react with other molecules because it does not have the reactive oxygen atom. This structure makes DNA strong and ensures it will last a long time without damage. Further, DNA is strong enough to be stored in a complex manner. If we were to stretch out all of the DNA contained in one cell of your body, it would be around five feet long. But DNA can be wrapped around storage proteins called histones to create nucleosomes. Nucleosomes can be packed tightly into a fiber called chromatin, 
which can then be packed even further into a chromosome. This allows 6 billion nucleotides to be stored within the nucleus of a cell. That's only about 1 500th of an inch. By contrast, RNA is not a very stable molecule, but it serves many roles in the cell that DNA could not complete. RNA polymerase, an enzyme that makes RNA from the DNA template, can quickly create an RNA transcript that can carry the information out of the nucleus. These messenger RNA molecules can then be translated into new proteins. Because RNA uses uracil and has an extra oxygen atom in the ribose sugar, RNAs break down very quickly. That's okay since each RNA molecule is only needed for a short time and more RNA molecules can easily be made. You can now pause the video again and answer this set of questions. You can find the answers to these questions through the quick test prep link in the video description. If you are studying for the AP test, be sure to check out all of the other resources we have for this section. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button, leave us comments on any DNA or RNA questions you have, and subscribe to the Biology Dictionary channel for more AP Biology content. Good luck!